Okay, so I'm going to create a stitch count of 10 based on a generalised um, tension gauge. As I say that, I suddenly have a moment of wonder. So like I said, I'm working on chunky. So this would be 14 um, stitches by 19 rows. But because we're going to gauge it on the fact that you're working on double knit, I'm just going to work it that way. So we'll just do 10. So I've done one already. So one, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've done a foundation row of 10 stitches. Now, based on the stitch that I want to create or use, I need to then add the stitches which correspond to that size. <clears throat> so a double crochet, which is the stitch I'm going to do, which is the smallest stitch, I'm going to do a plus one. That acts as my turning chain. And then I will work in the chain um, one away from the hook. So basically the second chain from the hook leaving the chain that we've just the plus one spare so that it creates the turn because it will bend and give me the height for the stitch that I require. So to work into our chain, we're going to go through the V. So if we look at the Vs, we're going to go through, skipping this one here, we're going to work into that V there, yarn over and then, um, sorry, pull through to create the two loops and then yarn over to complete it. So go through that V, pick up your yarn, to give you two loops and then yarn over to complete your double crochet or single crochet should you be American. Go through the V, pick up the yarn, create those two loops and then go through to create your double crochet. Go through the V, pick up your yarn, leaving you two and then yarn through. So go through, pick up, yarn over, pull through. Go through, pick up, yarn over, go through. So get yourself into a pattern where you're creating a rhythmic sound that you repeat in your head so that you just feel it. And what will happen also, and I take for granted now, is that when I'm anchoring, um, I'm also feeling the stitches like as if they're braille. So <laughs> I know it sounds crazy. I know that you're thinking, what on earth? But I'm sure every crochet that's been crocheted for some time that may come across this video um, will know what I mean. When you can feel your stitches, you can feel the stitch change, you can feel those things, and it kind of acts like braille. And that all comes with time, practice, and consistent, you know, consistently making things. So to go up to the next row, as we did in the previous video, I am going to go one, two as my turning chain, and then yarn over because we're going to create a half treble and then I'm going to go back through, pull through, yarn over, all three. And you can see now how those turning chains are working. So the, port, the importance of a turning chain is not that we count it as a stitch, but that we generate the height required for the stitch we're going to work into on that row. So I've created two there, I've worked my half treble and you can see how it lines up and it will smooth out. There you go. So every time we do a chain up, which we'll be doing even when we're working on the granny square um, clusters or blanket or whatever you want to call it, we'll be working on the fact of creating a chain up. In this case, because we're working on the turn, it's called a turning chain because it creates the height. When we're working on the granny square, we'll be just working on a chain up. And that will give us the bridge that we need in order to create the height for that row. It will also help us map out the end of the row as well, which you can do if you want. You can stitch marker this, knowing that that is your turn chain and that you're not going to count it as a chain. And you know that's where you ended there. And again, it's a way of not only holding the stitch, but it's a reminder of where you started. And that's always a good thing to do when you're a beginner. The other thing to consider as well is obviously stitch counting, which we've done in other videos. They're good for that. So stitch markers are handy and they're great for reminding us, for keeping count and for holding when we're finished. So there's lots of reasons to use stitch markers. They are very, very handy and help us map things out. So there you go. I hope that helps um, and I'll get on to the next video.